Tales from the Crypt. The Vault of Horror. <laughs> and now that CK has curdled your anemic blood, it's time for your host in the Vault of Horror, the Vault Keeper, namely me, to entertain you with a spine tingly nauseating novelette for my creep collection. Let's see. Oh, let's not see. <laughs> yes, this is a good gory one. It's called Blind Alleys. The home was old and paint starved and drafty and badly in need of repair. The roof leaked and the windows rattled and were covered with years of dust and grime. The inmates of the home walked grim face and silent through cracked plaster halls or sat in dingy rooms on crawling beds. They shivered in the cold when winter came, when there was no steam to warm the rusted radiators. And they sweltered in the heat when summer burned, when long broken fans lay idle and unrepaired and unable to waft a breath of cooling relief. But they could not see the paint peeled walls, the dirt clouded windows, the dusty and cobwebbed halls of this their home. These inmates, they could not see the roaches and the rats scampering across the unwashed floors, as this was a home for the blind, for wretched souls who lived in worlds of darkness, who stared with unseen eyes at the misery around them, and yet knew and hated all of it. For the loss of one sense only tends to sharpen the others, to tune them more finely, to make them more acute. The inmates knew because they could taste and touch and smell and hear. They could taste the spoiled and rotted food placed before them at mealtimes. They could touch the sticky, filmy cobwebs, the dust layers covering everything. They could smell the foul odors of mildew and faulty plumbing and poor sanitation and neglect. They could hear the rats scampering and the roaches crawling and the termites burrowing and the lice and the bed bugs and the flies and a thousand other creatures of filth that moved. And they could hear other creatures too. Other creatures of filth that moved. They could hear Mr. Grunewald, the home's director, in his office apartment downstairs, entertaining his latest lady friend with the money he saved on them, the inmates. Honey, please. Come now, honey. You like gunner, don't you? They could hear his almost maniacal laughter and the clinking of champagne glasses. They could smell the mouth-watering odors of the lavish supper he was enjoying. And they could see in their mind's eyes the luxuries with which he'd selfishly surrounded himself at their expense. Here, beautiful. <laughs> Have another drink. This is more like it. Yes, Gunnar Grunwald has indeed surrounded himself with luxuries, paid for with the allotments given him for each blind inmate. Why paint and plaster jury halls that they never see when he could have an air conditioner for those blistering summer days? Why launder sheets and blankets and clothes of dirt smears and sweat stains that they never see when he could have a heater for those biting winter nights? Why give those miserable blind fools beauty if they could not appreciate beauty? Gunnar Grunwald felt that way. So he skimped on the inmates, cut corners here, denied there, and with the surplus, he supplied himself with beauty. Fine furniture, good books, plush rugs, expensive drapes, and an occasional evening of female companionship. They were all gunners to enjoy. He even bought a dog. <coughs> A vicious dog. He had a good reason. For Gunner known that another sense had replaced the inmate's sense of sight. A deep-seated sense, growing each day. He'd seen it in their webbed blind eyes, in their silent grim faces. He'd see their growing hate. So he bought the dog for protection. And with the dog at his side, Gunner walked self confidently before them knowing that his sight in the dog's strength would keep him from harm. And so he'd been able to continue to enjoy his fiendish little amusements like tripping helpless unsuspecting inmates as they tottered blindly by him. Ooh! <laughs> or removing something that they'd come to know was there and encountered on. The banister! Where's the ha! <laughs> 
or adding something new. Oh, <laughs> or being just mean. <laughs> Yes, Gunner amused himself with his charges and ability to see. He'd been sadistic with his tortures, and he'd grown fat on his denials, and his charges had sat in their world of darkness and waited, listening. Gunner, please, it's the dog. He makes me nervous. I'm afraid I'm sorry, of baby. Here, yeah, boy, here. Yeah. Oh. Listening for their opportunity. You'll stay out there until Gunner is through. And tonight, their opportunity came. Doggy doggy, nice doggy. Here doggy, here's some meat. So they lured the dog down into the old musty cellar of the home with some meat scraps they'd saved from their scant meals. In here doggy, come boy, quick lock him up. And then they waited. They waited for Gunner's friend of the evening to leave. Good night Gunner and thanks. Thank you my dear. They waited for Gunner to miss his dog. Brutus, where are you? Brutus, bro! And then they struck blindly. Unseen, they surrounded their hated enemy. W what is it? What do you want? Go back to your rooms, all of you! And they dragged him to the cellar too, to another waiting cubicle. No, no, please, please, help me! Hey, please, help me while you bring us help me! But Gunner's only answer was the soft whine of the dog in the adjoining cubicle. Oh, Brutus, they got you too. Then they began to work. They dragged out old hammers and rusty nails and idle, long idle saw. And they went through the home and cut and ripped and chopped the lumber they needed. Gunner listened to the hammering echoing through the cellar. He listened to their giggles and chatter. And he wondered, what are they up to? What are they making? And he'd listen as the night passed and dawn came, and the dog in the cubicle next door grew hungry and paced and ran, growled and scratched, and his, his stomach growled. Hey, <laughs> Brutus, you fools, you'll get wild if you don't. It'll be dangerous. I know, Mr. Gainwalk. The day passed and night came again. Gunner's own stomach ached with hunger, and still they hammered and sawed and laughed and talked. What are you up to? What are you going to You'll see, Mr. Greenwall. Dog in the next cubicle hauled all of it and snarled and scratched. Gunner shut. The dog was a beast now, a hunger crazed beast. And the herring went on. Food, oh, give me some food, please. Do you call what you were feeding us food, Mr. Greenwall? Dawn came again and the second day passed. Next door the dog was fighting with itself, throwing itself against the cubicle sides and howling madly. <laughs> Brutus will kill anyone that sets foot in there now. Gunner himself was half crazed with hunger as the third night came. And then, towards midnight, the hammering stopped. The cellar was suddenly flooded with light. Even Brutus stopped snarling in anticipation. They're, they're, they're opening my cubicle! They stood before him, dirty, sweated, tired from long hours of labor. The hammer, the nine unseen carpenter, Gunner blinked out at them. Come, Mr. Grunwald, you're free to go! Why the last, Mr. Greenwald? We built this just for you. It leads to the cellar steps and freedom. Gunner stood up as they darted off. He could hear the footsteps fade as they rounded corners and ran down long corridors that turned and twisted and doubled back. Gunner stared. They, they, they built a maze, a, a puzzle. I had to figure it out. And then Gunner saw the gleaming sl slivers of steel embedded in the maze walls. Razor blades! The walls are lined with razor blades! They want me to cut myself! Hurry, Mr. Greenwald! Hurry! Gunner laughed to himself as he started out of his cubicle. <laughs> the fools! If I'm careful, if I take my time, I'll never have to touch the walls! Just walk slowly like this. Careful! A sound behind Gunner froze his blood. <laughs> A snarl and a squeak of a door opening. Brutus! Hunger Christ Brutus! They freed him too! 
Gunner began to run. He had to reach field before that starved dog caught him. He ran down the doors at the sound of the loping, snarling hound close behind him. Oh, no, no. He brushed against the razor blade, slashing his flesh. He stumbled and got up, ran on, frightened wild, down through the twisting double back maze corridors with that razor line walls and the slopering, slobbering hound close behind. <laughs> and then some idiot turned off the lights. No, no, no! Oops, wrong turn, Gunner. Now, now, don't go to pieces. After all, it is almost like being blind. <laughs> well, that's my sickening story for this issue of CK's new mag. Now it's time for me to close the vault of horror and turn you back to him. As the dismembered parts of a corpse said after a ship to the Undertakers, we'll get together again. Bye!